Okay, let's focus on creating our first host pool. Um, I want to point out here in the host pools blade, you can actually filter by workspace. Uh, workspaces, if you're not familiar, are basically containers for the application groups that drive the access to WVD. If I go into Azure, I can see workspaces here. Uh, in our case, I'm actually going to delete these uh, and it will give us the option to create one because we are doing a greenfield delivery. So we're going to assume we didn't have anything to begin with. So I'll go ahead and delete those real quick. Okay, we have no workspaces in Azure right now. We're going to go ahead and create a new workspace and host pool. We'll click add host pool and we'll see that we are going to name and we can put a description for the host pool. So let's just call this standard. This will be for everyone. I'm not going to put a description. Let's quickly talk about the four experiences, right? So multi-user desktop pooled. So this means it's a group of hosts that will allow for multiple users per host. Next is multi-user remote app pooled, group of hosts that will publish remote app to multiple users per host, right? So those remote app sessions can be uh, many to one per host. And then we have our single user options, right? So either a pool of desktops of which one user will get one host, but it could be any host at any time or dedicated. In our case, we're going to go with multi-user desktop pooled. We'll see that we have the option to create a new workspace because we don't have an existing one. I'm just going to go with the generic WVD workspace. Naming prefix for the machines, which we can change later. So I'm just going to put WVD. I'll notice that I can choose from multiple networks if I have them linked, member and settings. Uh, we'll go with the client LAN. I'm going to use my desktop image that I created recently. Uh, VM size and OS disk, I'm going to leave it this minimum and then we can look at sizing options later. Uh, resource group, again, I've got multiple options because of my integrations and settings and I'm actually going to uh, go with this this general one. And then I'm not going to use the quick assign yet, but I could use this to immediately assign access to a group. Like I've got a WVD group here, uh, but we'll come back to that later. I'm going to hit OK. This will just take about a minute or two. And again, what is it doing? It's creating the workspace in Azure. And then it's also creating the application group that drives multi-user desktop. Uh, let's see if we can actually refresh and see this real quick. All right, so we can see that WVD workspace now exists here. Uh, and we might be ahead of it, but let's see. We can see application groups. And there's our standard, right? And we can see that we're at the next screen, which is auto scale. I'm gonna leave this off for now and I would recommend you do as well until you've finished your testing and everything's ready because this could create VMs and you might not be ready for or in need of those yet. And we'll see those defaults that I said earlier here and we can come back and change those when we need to. We'll hit save. And we've got our host pool. Okay. And as you're already aware, right, you can set up auto scale to automatically add and remove hosts. But if you need to just manually add a host into the pool, I can click manage hosts. I can click add host. And I'll notice that I can define how many hosts I want to add. Um, I can start a prefix for naming the host and then we'll add a four character modifier after each host. And then again, I can define things like the network I want it to live on, uh, the resource group it should fall in. Uh, image type, things like that. And so let's go ahead and say we're going to add two hosts. We'll just put WVD here and hit OK. And it's going to kick off both of those as separate tasks. We can see add host. We can see that four digit uh, suffix after WVD. And we'll let those go ahead and run. OK, those hosts have completed their build. And we can look at the details to see all the steps it went through. And we'll go ahead and pause there. Okay, and there's some options that we can perform on the individual host, right? So we're in WVD, we're in host pools, we're in our actual host pool, and we can see the two hosts that are within it. Uh, I can see from the drop down, right? I can power off, I can reboot, I can resize or reimage. So that means that this individual host could be changed in size uh, or image type. Maybe I'm testing some changes I recently made to the image on one host. Um, and I also have options where I can send messages to available users that are logged in. I could deactivate the host, right? So put it in a drain mode. I could even delete the host. And I always like to point out you have options here where you can choose to not 
uh, remove the VM from AD, uh, the object, uh, or whether you want to reuse that VM name again.